Good Monday morning! I am MPJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function. If you are a regular viewer of this show, you can might notice that this is not my normal voice. Uh, that is because I have been partying and screaming for the last uh, three days, which I am actually way too old to do. So today is like, what better day to tackle one of the more complicated programming languages in the world. Let, let's start doing a Haskell course. Yeah, let's do that. So then, why should we learn Haskell? To be perfectly honest with you, I don't know entirely why, because I don't know Haskell. So we will be learning it together on this course. Functional programming has been growing wildly in the last few years. My uh, series on functional programming in JavaScript is way more popular than I thought it would be. I think the movement really picked up speed when uh, Facebook launched React. I think that's when functional programming really started hitting uh, mainstream programming. Recently, a lot of people have started using uh, React together with a library called Redux, which is an amazing library. It allows you to express your uh, UI logic in a very, very functional manner and makes it really easy to reason about. Uh, if you're not using Redux and you're using React, you're basically living your life wrong. You should check out this tutorial by Wes Boss uh, on Redux. It is amazing. So to me, Haskell has always seemed like this um, almost mythical beast of a programming language. Whenever you look at it, it looks like nothing else. It's not a very popular language. However, at the same time, uh, the people that do work with it seem to really, really like it. If you look at the Stack Overflow survey of 2016, it is one of the most loved programming languages. And what I mean by that is that they they asked people uh, what they work with and the percentage of people that expressed interest in uh, continuing to work with that. Also, a lot of very smart people around me are, are advocates of, uh, of Haskell and also a lot of people like celebrities that I look up to, like John Carmack, also speak very highly of Haskell. So it seems to me like it can't be too badly spent time to explore Haskell and see what what it's all about. So as I said, I don't know Haskell, so we need some kind of learning resource here. Uh, and for our curriculum, I have uh, picked Learn You a Haskell for Great Good. It's a um, free online book. Uh, you can read it online for free. Uh, and you can also buy it if you want to give uh, money to fine people. I have picked this book uh, primarily because it has a very funny title and it also has a son saying holy shit. Okay, let's get started. Read it online. Uh, learn you a Haskell for great good. All right, introduction about this tutorial. So what's Haskell? What do you need to dive in? Starting out, ready, set, go. Awesome. Click that. Ready, set, go. All right, let's get started. If you're a sort of horrible person who doesn't read instructions to things and you skipped it, you might want to read a lot. No, I don't. Um, right, the first thing, yeah. Okay, so they want you to install the uh, Haskell compiler. Uh, you probably already have that installed because you have tried to uh, learn Haskell once and then failed. Uh, uh, but if you don't, uh, it you just... Google Haskell download and click things until it's installed. But once you have it, you write GCHI, and that sounds for Great Compiler Haskell uh, Interactive. Oh, it's Great Haskell uh, Compiler Interactive. Right. So they say that you can set the prompt to GCHI uh, here. Uh, I'm not sure why would you would do that because, like you, uh, you want to set that to an emoji. I think uh, emoji. Uh, get list of all emojis. Copy and paste. Let's find one. What? Uh, picking an emoji for your Haskell terminal uh, is. It's very easy to get stuck here. As you see now, I'm I'm stuck uh, trying to decide on an emoji. 
Oh yeah, this, this, this is this is possibly the weirdest emoji in. Once you have completed that step, uh, we can start learning Haskell. Uh, the Haskell is here, so I can type 2.15, uh, 17, 49 uh, times 100, and and it makes math. And I can do 5 divided by 2, and it divides it. And it's also just like JavaScript in this. You can just write, you know, math, like 49999, and you can, yeah, it, it calculates it. It also warns about this caveat, like if you, you're you using negative numbers, like 50 times minus 1, you can't do that. Uh, that's pretty weird. Also, the error here, like this is horrible. Uh, but either way, you need to do parentheses around minus 1s. As a JavaScript programmer, this makes me kind of happy because people nag about the pitfalls of JavaScript all the time, but at least JavaScript doesn't have this shit. And you can do boolean expressions like true and false. That's equals false. You know, like also you can do, do, do like true and false. No, true and true, of course. Yeah, that's gonna be true, I guess. Yes. And you can also do the or or operators like yes or false. And you can also negate things so not false becomes true. This is like writing this in in, uh, in JavaScript, and you can uh, infer equality. So five equals five is true, and five equals four that's false. And you can also check that five is is not equal to. So five is it's not equal to four that is is true. And uh, if you do five is not equals to five that is false. Double negation. Ugh. Um, the, the equivalent on this in JavaScript would be this, right? So, what if we try 5 plus, uh, hello. Okay, so it says that uh, no instance of num char arising from use of plus in the expression 5 plus hello in an equation for it, it equals 5 plus hello. This is quite possibly the worst error message ever devised. But what it's trying to say is that it Haskell doesn't know how to add uh, five and hello together because five is a uh, five is a number and hello is a string. In JavaScript, this had would just have ended up being hello, and that is because JavaScript does something called type coercion. It just tries to uh, when it when it sees something like this, this when JavaScript sees something like this, it just tries to like coerce the two things into a a, uh, a a a general type that can be added together and it squashes them together which can sometimes be helpful and sometimes not you know uh i'm not sure if i think it's a good idea or a bad idea but javascript does that uh and haskell uh absolutely does not haskell is very picky about the types and it uses this a lot to try to assist you in writing correct programs so, plus here in Haskell, it expects both sides to be numbers. I'm not sure if you can, can you plus two strings together? Like, hello? Plus world? No, you can't. But I could, perhaps I can do this. Yes, I can. So if I, hello? Yeah, I can. So equals works on, on strings and numbers, but plus only works on, on numbers. However, if I do this, hello is not equals uh, five. It breaks with an error message from the moon. Oh, but, but that is actually because I'm trying to write JavaScript in Haskell, which does not work. No, it's, it's this one. Hello, and we can try that, compare that to 5. It's still a very hard to understand error message. But uh, what it's trying to say is that uh, not equals to 5 can only compare uh, things of the same type. I must compare, like, things of the same type. Haskell, very picky about types. You can do 5 plus 4 plus one, I think. 
Yeah, that actually confuses me because it feels a little bit inconsistent because in my world this is an int and this is a float. Uh, and I still think they are in Haskell, but they, I guess that the, it says that 4 can act like an integer, but so 5 is the one that has to adapt. I don't know. Um, it's confusing. You may not have known it, but we've been using functions now all along. What? Okay, that means that plus is actually a function, and this is a function. And if I type 5, 5, if I type 5 times 5, and that becomes like this is actually a function. And functions in Haskell that are sandwiched in between like this, they are called infix functions. But most functions that deal with uh, uh, non-numbers, they are called prefix functions, and they are they are more alike what we uh, we're used to in JavaScript. So let's take a look at them. We'll start by learning the most boring function in Haskell, which which is suck. And suck works like you press uh, right, give it six, and then it calls seven. And if you uh, six like eight, it gives you nine. What if I write give it minus one? Oh, Haskell trap um, zero. All right. In JavaScript, the equivalent syntax would would just be. Uh, Six. Uh, but in Haskell, as, as you see, uh, Haskell is extremely concise. Uh, it has just as much syntax as you need, but no more. Another function in Haskell is uh, the minimum. I mean, like, so if I say six, seven, it's gonna give me six. Uh, or if, like, I guess there is a max, maybe. Max. Yeah. So we can combine this and say min uh, 6, 7, and then add max uh, 6, uh, 10,000. And that will give us 10,006. Uh, so the order execution of these things are not obvious, but it's it function application, which is what um, Haskellers ref refer to as this thing, is when you write a function and then you add a space and then arguments, that will have precedence over uh, infix application like this, which means that it will first execute the min 6, 7, and then the max 6, 10,000, and then it will plus them together, thus giving us the right answer. However, if we write suck uh, 9 times 10, that will uh, be wrong. Because suck nine will win over a times ten here, like so it will it's gonna do suck nine, uh, which will be ten, and then it will multiply that with ten. Like if we want to make sure that this, yeah, like that. So adding parentheses works just like in math. It just means that we execute this first before um, passing into the function here. So this is one of the things that strikes me with Haskell. It, just, it feels a bit more mathy than, than JavaScript does. Unfortunately, this also means that a lot of examples refer to math. So in, in, this, uh, in the book here, it says that, for instance, the div functions take two integers and does integral division between them. If you don't know what integral division is, uh, that's, you're not alone. I don't know either. Let's find that out. I guess it divides it and throws away the difference. Haskell, this is why nobody uses you. Screw that, that's not even what the author of the book is trying to explain. What they are trying to explain is that you can apply functions, prefix functions, 
like infix functions by adding backticks to them. So I can do 92 div uh, and uh, uh, 10. No, that didn't work. Oh, no, no. Backticks. Backticks. That's it. So I can do that. This, this statement here is the same as this one because I added added backticks here. So I guess I can do this with, with max as well or something. Yeah. So this is one of the things that makes Haskell look a bit weird because uh, in, in, in uh, JavaScript, uh, all these functions would look something like something like this, right? But uh, like they have a parentheses here and they have a comma to separate the arguments. But in Haskell, it's much more terse and looks like that. If, if you see something like this, uh, uh, that's a bad example. Uh, no, but like this. Then that just means that uh, we uh, this is evaluated first. This has, has no real significance in this in this thing. We we can just do ninety two. By the way, if I do suck suck uh, ninety two, would that give us uh, ninety four? No, it won't. I guess I need to add parentheses. Yes. So yeah, it's mathy. That's it for today, you did good! We got our feet a little bit wet with uh, the, the basics of Haskell syntax and next time we're gonna look at how to declare our own functions. I've linked to the chapter in uh, Learn Your Haskell down below. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. New episodes every Monday morning. Make sure that you visit the channel and subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next episode. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.